Rose is about our church walking in greater unity. Today's message is actually titled, Build a Bridge, Submitting to One Another. Build a Bridge, Submitting to One Another. Listen to Ephesians 5, verse 21. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Submit to one another. And we know there's scriptures out there of wives submitting to husbands and and children submitting to their parents and slaves or employees submitting to their bosses, to their leaders. That's all there. But right here, it says to submit to one another as well. There seem to be different ways that we submit. And in a church is what I'm more focused on today more than talking about marriage and talking about family life and everything. That'll come another day. But today I just, I want to talk about unity in the church. I want to talk about us submitting to one another. A very powerful thing. Sometimes we think of submission a little bit more like a UFC fight. Got somebody down on the ground, you got them in a chokehold, waiting for them to tap out like, all right, all right, I give up, I submit, I submit. And I think that's where a lot of people, they, they see that word like that. And so when we say submit, it's an alarming word. It's a fearful word. It, it's a word of, of concern. And, and maybe you want to walk out right now because you hate this word. But I want to I talk to you a little bit today about the real biblical meaning of the word submit. Because it is far different than what the world has made it out to be. There is a sense of that word that Satan will one day completely and fully submit, whether he wants to or not, to God Almighty. He certainly will. But when God is mainly talking about it in the Bible and in a lot of these scriptures, it means something different. Let me first of all talk about it like this. So, submission comes from a Greek word called hupotasso. Hupotasso. I know. She said, say it real fast. Hupotasso. It's the only way you can say it. Hupotasso. Hupotasso. Here's what it means. To arrange or place yourself under. To arrange or place yourself under. It actually has, um, it comes from actually like a military term. So you have different ranks and then you have people under those ranks. So it does mean that you place yourself under someone. But here's the thing. Submission is meant to create order. It's not meant to control people. It it brings order to things, not meant to control. Ray Stedman said this. You just have to listen to this. It's really good. Submit has become probably one of the most hated words among women today. The meaning has been grossly distorted. Many wrong things have been done in the name of submission. Perhaps the first thing that needs to be said about submission is that it does not cancel out equality. Submit is a word that is addressed to both males and females. Thus, it is not a sexist word. Everyone must submit to other people. The outstanding manifestation of true submission is seen in our Lord's submitting of himself to the Father as a young boy to his parents. No one ever conceived Uh, No one would ever conceive of the idea that Jesus found it a reproach to submit to the Father. He delighted in it. It was voluntary on his part. In no way did he regard it as a threat to the equality which he knew existed between himself and the Father. Therefore, to submit to someone does not mean you are not equal. This is the confusing meaning which the word Uh, which the world has poured into this word. Submission does not mean inequality. Literally, it means, and we just said this, to put yourself under, arrange yourself under someone for a good and proper purpose. It is a totally voluntary action. That's a whole different meaning from what most of us understand that word to be. So true submission is not meant to be forced. It's a an, it's an heart attitude. It's something that, that you and I need to decide in our hearts. Think about it. Whether we're talking about our boss or we're talking about a spouse or we're talking about uh, leadership um, 
somewhere else, even leadership in the church, since we're talking about the church, I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about maybe you're on one of our serve teams. We've got serve teams all over the place. And maybe your leader is the one that you are to submit to. And yet what I'm throwing out there today is also the fact of what 520, or 521 says here in Ephesians, that we are to submit to one another. Submit to one another. So if you're a bit of a control freak, you might not like today's message. <laughs> Submitting to one another means this. It, 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 it means a co-op between two people. There's 100% giving on both sides. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually, Tina, you're going to have to come up here real quick. And if you guys would, put, put the title slide back up again. You're just going to hold the mic for me. She was scared. She didn't have to do something. You're going to do a dance. Go ahead. No, I'm kidding. So I just need you to hold the mic to me. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that's all. That's all, that's, all you, that's, all, that's all you got to do. She always wants the mic. So everybody just, just take your hands like this. Well, first of all, see that bridge here? That bridge is what architects would call an arch bridge. Makes an arch. We understand it. That's pretty, pretty obvious. But an arch bridge takes a co-op between two sides. On that bridge, though you can't really see it, on both sides, see, because a bridge connects two sides together, right? Pretty obvious. There needs to be a connection. On both sides of that bridge, it is, there's, there's what they call abutments. That's the, the concrete that sits on, on both sides. It keeps those sides really steady and strong. But as that bridge is built, now, now take your hands like this. Keep your fingers like this because you're just going to come together and just lock them together. That is exactly the way that type of bridge is built. The arch in St. Louis, since we're in St. Louis, the arch was built that way. It came up, came up, came up, came up, and then they put the last piece together. This bridge has done the same thing. Now, hold on. Do this again. Put your hands like this. Very gently, just push on. Push, push against each other on your, on your fingers. Just push. That force, equal force on both sides, is what keeps that bridge up for hundreds of years. The archway is amazing. Such a powerful design. Now, put them back up again. <laughs> now, as you're pushing gently, I want you to hurt yourself, but as you're pushing gently, try, and you, and you could do it if you think about it, let your right or left arm, just let one of your arms relax. And if you see what happens, there's a collapse that begins to happen. The bridge gives way, and it folds over to the other side. So good. So what has, been, what has to happen for the bridge to be effective is both sides have to be giving. Both sides have to be putting forth effort. Both sides have to be submitting to one another. That is literally what keeps this bridge up. It's the force of the push that goes between both sides. I've been uh, in Mexico, and in Mexico where I was at, there were horse stables. These horse stables are nearly 300 years old, and they still have arch roofs to them. If you were inside the stable, it's an arch roof made out of brick, and they're still standing. It's an incredible architectural design. God wants you and I to live our lives in that same exact way. Where both sides give effort. Both sides submit to one another. Both sides listening. And I'm not talking about just marriage. You know, everybody's probably thinking marriage. But I'm, I'm talking about even as teams and as a church. But do apply this to your marriage. But do also apply this to your workplace and at school and everywhere else. If you're a boss, you need to hear some things that are being said today. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying today. Because God designed us to need each other. No doubt about that. One another, each other, that's, the Bible is filled with those. There's a, there's a ton of them. There's like 70 of them in the Bible when it talks about one another's. So to give effort, to submit to one another, we're going to have to respect each other. We're going to have to give honor to each other. We're going to have to prefer each other. We're going to have to serve each other. And that all looks like 
you know, coming in and, and doing your part, coming in and, and, and serving to the best of your ability, uh, even down to uh, don't show up late and, and all that kind of stuff. You know, all those things matter. So if you're going to give your effort to build not just Spirit Word Church, but to build a church that God is building, then let's give full energy behind it and let's make it happen. Let's, let's not let somebody else do more than you're willing to do. And, and this is almost, I don't want this to sound like, this is all for Spirit Word Church. I'm, I just want to really, truly create unity here. And there are a lot of different per- personalities here. And the bigger we get, more and more personalities will be added into the mix. And there'll always be opportunity to be offended, to be hurt, to be wounded. And yes, that even happens in churches if you're one that doesn't realize that because we're people. Wherever people are at, that opportunity is there for wounds to happen, for hurts to happen. Um, have you guys ever heard the golden rule? Anybody know what it is? For, for uh, what am I trying to say? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. A lot of, maybe maybe you're newer, newer to the church, maybe you're newer to the Word of God, and you think that's an ancient, ancient Chinese proverb or something like that, but it's not. That is actually from Matthew 7, 12. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Such a simple, simple practice, simple word, very hard to practice is what I should say. Very hard to practice because we get ourselves all mixed in there. And our emotions get in there and our attitudes get in there and, and our desires, our wants, our self, it all, it all gets mixed in there. And, and we just want what we want. And this person's moving too slow and this person doesn't do it the way I would do it. And, and they didn't show up on time and, and blah, 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 blah. And it just, it just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. But we're to submit to one another. And that submission takes effort. It takes work. Jesus himself... I think this is probably one of the greatest examples of submitting to one another, of serving one another in the Bible. And that is when Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. Let alone him coming from heaven and coming down to earth to save us, of course. But when he washed the feet of the disciples, I mean, even even Peter in the first place, he was like, whoa, 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 no, you're not washing my feet. Because he understood that that is what servants do. See, back, back then, you, you, if you were wealthy enough, you had a servant that would actually wash the feet of the guest when they came in. That is a servant role, 100% servant role, kind of one of the low of the lows. I mean, you're washing somebody else's dirty feet. And Jesus did this. Now watch this, because this is where you and I need to learn some lessons. Jesus did this to a bunch of guys who would one day leave him because they were fearful for their own life. He did this for Peter, who didn't just deny him one time, not two times, but three times. Do you realize he washed the feet of Judas? And this was right before, look it up in John, this is right before Jesus was about to be be betrayed by Judas. And he washed his feet. And I, I, I can, you just have to remember everything Jesus went through. I just got this flash in my head of the things that Jesus went through. And here he was washing this guy's feet that he knew was going to betray him. And this whole thing is going to start the whippings, the beatings, all of that. But because of this guy, he's what's going to start it. There were a lot of things that were going on already, but Judas is going to take it to a whole nother level. John 13, 14 says this. This is, this is after he had washed their feet. He said, now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. You also should wash one another's feet. He was demonstrating servanthood. He was demonstrating how to submit to one another. God the... God in him, let's just say, he's all man, all God, Jesus was. And here he is, in a way, submitting, serving in one of the lowest positions possible, human flesh, compared to his perfection, his holiness, his greatness. So like I said, submission doesn't come easy. 
it takes a lot of effort. It takes um, on purpose effort is the way we love that word on purpose um, because that's the Christian life. It has to be lived on purpose. Otherwise, the enemy will, will just roll over you. The world will roll over you. Your own self and your own wants will take charge of your life. If you don't live your life for Jesus on purpose and become more and more like him constantly, it is an effort. It is a struggle. And like, like that word that we just heard during worship, that's an effort. That's, that's, a, that's a push. That's, that's something you have to do on purpose to be with God. So that when the day comes, when the stirring comes, we're still standing. We still got this. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's a little bit of shaking, but, and there, there doesn't need to be, but maybe there is, but I am not going to collapse because I've got the Spirit of God on the inside of me. And I'm confident that He has my back, no matter what happens in my life, because I'm connected to Him. I'm connected with Him. Ephesians 4, 2-3 takes effort. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Make every effort. So when we're working around the church, when we're working together, and and again, there's somebody there, you don't like really care for their personality. You don't like the way they do things. Uh, Maybe you're not even working around here. You just don't like somebody else. Listen, a, a church The more unified as a church we are, the Bible says that they will know us by their love. Love for one another. Not just their exuberance for God, their their excitement for the Holy Spirit, their, their love for the word. Although if you had a love for the word, then you would begin to practice all of these things and these things would begin to take place in your life. So you can't, you can't just love God and then hate people. It doesn't work that way. You can't be submitted to God and not submit yourself to other people, not prefer other people over yourself. Because God says we're supposed to. We we are to submit to one another. And sometimes with those people that are around us, that that we don't like a whole lot, you know, maybe, maybe you're supposed to be Jesus to them. Maybe they're not pulling their weight. We know that the bridge needs that. But maybe you need to demonstrate that to them first. Maybe you need to be the one. And you don't need to be the one that says, well, bless God. And you just walk away and get all upset. And now you've just lowered yourself lower than they are. They may come by it honestly, but you're you're getting all offended at what what they're doing. You realize that in a church, here's what what a lot of people don't, don't understand about churches. Churches like families have a whole bunch of age groups in them. I don't mean that some people are in their 60s and 70s and other people are in their teens or something like that. I'm talking about their maturity in the Lord. There are age groups all over in here. And those of us who are more mature, if that's what you want to call it, and that's what the Bible does call it, so let's call it that. We're all in a process of, of becoming more and more like Christ. So, but if we're mature, we need to be an example. It, otherwise, it's like a, a dad, and I've seen this, and I've probably done this with my boys, but it's like a dad lowering himself to the kids and just getting into an argument with them. <laughs> yeah, well, you did it this way. <laughs> and it's just like, what are you doing? You're the adult, right? You're supposed to be the adult. And so we're told or we're called to respond different in those situations. But that takes effort. That takes controlling your own flesh, which is a fruit of the Spirit. So you just might be an example to them. I'm going to have our worship team go ahead and come back up here. Yep, it's not a long message today. But there's some cautions that I want to give us real quick. They're not, they're not even very long. If you're going to submit to somebody else, and we're supposed to, right? We, we saw it in the Word, 523, Ephesians 5.23. Submit to one another as reverence for the Lord. So we're doing it as unto the Lord. The Lord is asking us to do it. So we're doing it out of submitting to God. He's asking us to submit to other people. So we're willing to submit to other people. But listen, when we submit to other people, don't submit and complain about it. Don't complain about it. That's not a submitted heart. Uh, somebody, I don't, know, I don't know who said this, but they said obedience is sitting down on the outside, but submission is sitting down on the inside. Obedience is sitting down on the outside so everybody sees it. You're just being obedient. You're just, okay, I'll do this. 
I'll, I'll sit. Okay, I'll sit. But what if your heart said, I want to serve these people. I want to serve at the church. I want to serve. And I realize there's going to be different personalities, and I realize that. But this is God's place, man. This is God's building this place. And if he's building his church, then I want to be a part of that. I don't want to be, I don't want to be the one that's fighting against God, fighting against his people. I want to be able to prefer other people. I want to be able to bring honor to other people and, and listen to other people, not just always have to have it my, my way, not be territorial like, this is mine. You can't have it. This is my ministry. You're messing with my ministry. But we do that. We can laugh about it, but I'm just telling you, that happens in the church a lot. But that's not, that's not God's way. I told our, um, our serve teams last week at a meeting that we had, as a church, we always want to have an, an open circle where we're allowing people to come into different ministries. We're allowing people to come into front doors and we're not looking at them like, who is that? Why is there a stranger here? We, we want strangers. <laughs> we want the world. We want people to find Jesus in this yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to have people in here who are going to be very rude, who are going to be struggling with major addictions in their life, with people whose marriages are an absolute wreck. That's just the mature. No, I'm kidding. That's not, that's just, <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> but we're going to have those people here. And, and we're going to have those who are in the middle somewhere too, trying to, trying to work this thing out. And then we're going to have those who are mature, who do handle things usually really well, but sometimes struggle. Sometimes, oh man, I was doing so good, but this person, they're putting me over the top here. Now, here's another one, another little caution. Don't submit and tell others how you have submitted. <laughs> Very humble of you. Here's another one. Don't submit to others and play the martyr. I'm really good at that one. Ask Tina. Really good at that one. She doesn't know, but this is not bad. Don't worry. No, it's not another one. She doesn't know. But I probably had to bite my tongue four times this morning because I wanted to play the martyr. I'll tell you a story. True story. You guys all know we got a puppy. The puppy keeps coming up. A little turkey. Now, this, this puppy, he's as cute as can be. He's an awesome dog. He really is. But he is a puppy. He's a four-month-old puppy. And uh, he likes to just still go potty in the house, we'll just say. And he likes to every once in a while wake up when he shouldn't wake up. Not, not very bad. He's pretty good about that. But when you do hear him, we're at a point now. It's like, okay, why, why is he whining? We keep him in a cage at night. Why is he whining? So this morning at about 4.15 or something like that, wasn't it about 4.15? He's just, he's just making noise. You can hear him kind of clumping around in his cage. I'm like, oh, man, what's he doing? Both of us are in bed, and we're like, I don't hear a thing. I hear nothing. Is she, is she going to get up? Is he going to get up? It's just, it's this, nothing's being said, but you know there's a battle going on. Well, I finally got up. I'm like, all right. He's, I mean, he's got to go outside is what, you know, what we're thinking. It's cold out there, man. And I'm literally putting all the clothes on and hoods and gloves and take him outside. And I don't even know if he went or not. It was still dark. I'm not even sure. I couldn't even tell. I bring him back inside. And at that point, I just said, all right, I'm just going to sleep on the couch. I'll sleep on the couch. Dog doesn't have to go back in the cage. I'll just sleep in the, sleep in the couch. And because I was going to, truthfully, I was going to get up in, you know, in an hour anyway. And so, all right, great. And so, um, so we did that. Let the dog out two more times this morning. And, and I literally had to say, are you not going to help me? You know, I was just like, <laughs> seriously. And I had to really like, because I really am weak in this area. I will play the martyr. You know that I had to let him out three times this morning. Yeah, I'm preaching. I'm trying to get ready. And are you going to help at all? You know, that's, that's, that's what my brain's thinking. 
And I don't know if you realized how good I did this morning, but I didn't, I wasn't going to go there. I'm like, God, I cannot preach this message <laughs> and do the yang, yang, yang thing. I'm terrible at that. I've realized that. I, I, I used to be, I'm, I'm, truthfully, I'm way better than I used to be. Thank God. Hallelujah. But I used to be really bad about that. Like, not even just with family. I had to let everybody know all the work that I did and how much of a martyr I was. And I was submitting, blah, 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 you know, whatever. Ridiculous. <laughs> so all of these kind of go together. But here's another one. Don't submit to someone and keep score with them. Ooh. We like to do that one. Humility doesn't keep score. That's tough. That's really tough to, to zip your lip. When somebody keeps doing something over and over, when you're going above and beyond, that, that was my thing. I'm going above and beyond and nobody is going with me. I'm doing everything. I'm telling you, that was my attitude. It was. And you know, if, if you're going to go above and beyond, which is how God wants us to, if you're going to go above and beyond, one, find balance in your life. Because maybe you're going above and beyond where you shouldn't be. Just saying, because I was doing that. I found a lot of, we're getting on to a whole other message here probably, but I found a lot of self-esteem in being the guy that did everything. Being the one that could do so many different things. But that was actually pretty stupid. It was out of balance. And so I would play the martyr then. Poor me, poor me, poor me. And I would keep score with other people. I'm doing this. They're doing nothing. I'm doing this. They're doing okay, okay, they, they did that, but, but I'm doing all of this. You know, it was just this constant keeping of score, and we can't do that. You can't have unity and keep score because there's always something in the background of your head saying, I'm doing all this, and they're not. I'm putting forth all the effort. The bridge can't come together, blah, 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 blah. And get ready now. Don't say, I'm glad he gave this message because so-and-so really needs to hear it. How many times were you guys already doing that? I didn't really see anybody, so I'm not sure. But if you weren't doing this, you might have been doing it up here. Boy, I'm so glad he's talking about this today. And the last one I've got here is demonstrate submission to others, even if they won't humble themselves. If they won't demonstrate it back, I get it. I get that the bridge has to come together. But realize, especially you who are mature, and truthfully, we just have some people who are just really good at serving. They just want to serve others. They may not even know Jesus that long, but they're really good servants. And so they come in and, and they're serving, but they feel like, man, nobody else is serving. Can I just tell you, don't, don't give up because you are demonstrating servanthood to other people. And as we get that better and better around here, and truthfully, we get it pretty well around here. I kind of feel like I'm speaking to the choir. If you're watching us online, we have a great church. We really do. We have a church that serves. We have a church that cares about each other. Um, we're not perfect, though. And I, I, we were talking about some of this this morning. I just want to keep that door shut of, of disunity, of disharmony, and, and all of that. I want to keep that shut. And I think that that's why God has been saying since the beginning of like January to me to really kind of work on unity. Work on loving each other. Love is so important. We've, we've mentioned the scripture many times, but, but the Bible literally says that you can give your life for God. But if you don't have love, it was for no reason. That's right. Love is everything. Love is everything. And that means you have to love the unlovely. Whatever he or she looks like to you. We continue to love. We continue to walk in peace. Peace, peace. Stop letting the world agitate you. Stop letting people around you just totally throw you off center. The closer, here's what I've seen. There are some things in all of us that maybe we need to work on. But as you're working on that, if you will draw closer and closer to Christ, a lot of those things will begin to fall off. I'm not saying that, that you don't need to get into some scripture and, and read that thing and apply that thing. I've done that. My wife has done that. Many of you have done that because we become, or we, we change and become more like him as we 
eat the scripture, so to speak, and man, we get it on the inside of us and it just, we keep hearing it over and over. It changes us. It transforms us. It renews our mind. So all these things are super, super important, but as you draw closer to God in whatever way that looks like to you, which is through prayer, which is through worship, which is through reading of the word, which is by coming to, to prayer night at seven o'clock every Wednesday night, by, by doing these things, there is a strength that will come up on the inside of you, a supernatural strength. And there is a peace and there is a joy that you will experience that you didn't have before. It's supernatural. It won't make sense, but it'll be there. It is supernatural. So if you're more mature and you're kind of wondering about other people, then you just be the leader. Be Jesus to them. Be Jesus to them. Though they come along and they betray you, though they come along and deny you, though they come along and talk bad about you, you keep serving them. You keep loving them. You keep, you keep building the church. Don't let them bring you down. And if you're connected with Christ, I'm telling you right now, they, they won't bring you down. They won't bring you down. You'll, you'll come back up every single time, every single time, even if they try to knock you down. So I just want to end with this scripture. And I say this a lot. Oh, this is one of my favorite scriptures. This is my favorite scripture in the Bible. And it's, it's a little bit longer, but I've read it before. This is Philippians 2, 2 to 11. This is Paul writing to the Philippians. Philippians. Make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of the others. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. He could have. He could have used that to his advantage any way he wants to. He could still do it today. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus is the ultimate Almighty, and yet he is the ultimate servant by choice. It's by choice. He laid his life down by choice. He, yes, he was murdered, but then again, he wasn't murdered. He laid his life down, gave it up. He was born so that he could die. He came for that purpose. He literally laid his life down for us. Now we, as he said earlier, need to do the same for one another. We need to wash each other's feet, not get angry at each other. And maybe this applies at your home. Maybe this applies at your work. Maybe it applies here at church. Maybe it's all of those. I don't know. But God is saying that the church is to be unified. The church, the way you do that is you have a humble heart and you submit to one another. If you do not have a humble heart, you will not submit. You won't submit to God. You won't submit to one another. Humility is everything when it comes to this walk with Christ. That's why he has been talking to us for two years now about humility, 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 humility. For so many years, I hear God just saying, for so many years, my people have not understood humility. They have walked and they've done things their own way. But now he's trying to change that. He's trying to awaken us to humility so that he can begin to build us back up the way he has designed us to be. And that's where I think you're beginning to hear some messages now about how we need to change, how we need to, we've been hearing humility, 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 but now he's saying, okay, now, now, that, now that you're listening with a heart that's broken before me, with a heart that's teachable, now let me show you some things because there's a better way than you guys have been doing it. And so let's take these hard messages. If you're on the serve team, this is like the third kind of hard message you've heard even to me, this isn't that hard. It's just submitting. It's, it's, it's humbling our hearts. That's, that's all. If, if you'll do that, this is easy stuff. There, there's a, there's a, a place in our heart that you should want to serve one another. You should want to serve, not just here, but 
but just a, a heart that says, man, I want to be a part of this. I, I, I love people and I want to help people. And a mature person will actually see that when somebody gets kind of crazy, kind of nutty, kind of whatever in their actions, there's something behind that. There's some growth that needs to happen. You don't have to get offended at them. You're the one that's supposed to be mature. Understand that there's something going on in their life. Something isn't right. Sometimes it's chemicals. Chemicals aren't flowing right in our bodies and we get agitated, we get upset. I get agitated when I'm tired. People always talk about hangry. Some of you are probably getting hangry right about now because it's almost getting to be lunchtime. So I'm just gonna keep talking a little long. No, but it's weird. Our bodies do that. We literally can get kind of grumpy because we're hungry, but, it, but that kind of stuff happens. And we just kind of got to blow off some of those things and just say, it's okay, I get it. They're, they're usually not like that or, or maybe they're always like that, but you still got to accept them, still love them, still draw them closer to Jesus. If you guys would, bow your head and close your eyes. And I just want to say, Jesus did all this for us. He came from heaven. He lowered himself. He washed our feet, so to speak, by dying on the cross, by sacrificing himself. He became the sacrifice for your and my sins. See, the Bible says that blood is required for the forgiveness of sins. That's in Hebrews. Blood is required for the forgiveness of sins. It was his own blood that paid the penalty, that paid that price because of your and my sin. It was our sin, but he paid the price for it. And that price allowed forgiveness to flow. And now all he asks is that we will just forgive him. That we will forgive, that he will forgive us. We ask to be forgiven by him. Sorry about that. We ask to be forgiven. And if you're willing to do that today, what's amazing is he will accept your heart, your humility. He will accept uh, your love for him. And he will forgive you of your sins. And it's that sin area that keeps us separated from him, that keeps us out of heaven. But when you are forgiven and you stand before God in the last days, he'll look at you and all he'll see is Jesus. He won't see your sin because your sins have been forgiven once and for all. Father God, today, we just submit ourselves to you. We humble our heart and we realize that sin has separated us from you. And if you have never given your heart to Jesus Christ today, hear what I'm saying to God and make this your prayer today. Father, we ask you to forgive us of our sins. We thank you for dying on the cross. More importantly than even the death on the cross, we thank you for rising from the dead. Three days later, you rose from the dead. And when you did, you defeated sin and death once and for all. And forgiveness was made available to me. And today I, I just say that I, I receive your forgiveness. I ask you to forgive me, come into my life and change me forever. I need you. I need to be forgiven. Change me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, if you said that prayer for the first time, or maybe, maybe you said it before, but it's, it's been a long time, and you really don't even know where you were standing with God, if you said that prayer from your heart, then this is a new opportunity. If you just said the prayer, it wasn't from your heart, it didn't, it didn't really do much at all. It's a heart condition that we come to God with. It, it's a submitting heart, it's a submitted heart. It's humility. It's asking him to forgive us because we realize that we need forgiveness. It's not just the words. And so if you said that from your heart, then I can declare to you today that your sins are forgiven, that he loves you and he accepts you just the way you are. And he'll put you on a journey of beginning to change you and transform you into more and more like him. And we've got some information to give you right after service that's gonna help you in that. And so I wanna encourage you that if that's you, 
Or if you're in here and you're like, I don't know if I really believe all this stuff or not, but I'm going to go ahead and get that little book that they've got. Then at the Welcome Center, when you leave here, I want you to pick that up out there. And then don't forget too, if you're our guest, we've got a free gift for you at the Welcome Center as well. We want to make sure that you pick that up as well today. Did you guys get something out of today's message?